Hey, Shelly. Hey, Lizzie. <laughs> Hi, Amy and Julie. Hi, Hi Amy and Julie. We're, we're so excited to jump back into our podcast this week. Thank you all for uh, tuning in. And we are so, so pumped about this episode because we are going to be circling back to not single to married, um, all about our conversation, which was all about the transition that's sort of unique for identical twins transitioning from um, not being married to getting married. And uh, we had a really great chat a few weeks back. Um, if you haven't listened to it already, go check it out. Uh, and today we have the honor and privilege of having Julie and Amy join us. They are also identical twins. And um, we're just really excited for this part two of that talk. Yes, and make sure you check out Julie and Amy have the Mystic Sisters. Um, they're on Substack, they're on YouTube, so go check out their, their sites too for more of their great content. Thank you. We're so excited to be here. I like, I just like looking at the camera and seeing all, like uh, our quadruplet. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we're all wearing blue on purpose because it's fun. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Very fun, very fun. So yeah, um, our talk, not, not Single to Married, was just that. I mean, the title says a lot. Um, it's just this idea that we aren't really single before getting married. Um, Michelle and I got married, both of us, we were 24. So Michelle and Daniel just celebrated their eighth wedding anniversary yesterday. So congratulations to them. Um, and Jesse and I, my husband and I, were, we celebrated our eight year running anniversary in January. So, you know, we're eight years in now to being married. Um, and that doesn't mean we know very much of anything, but we, <laughs> we uh, by God's grace, are, um, you know, learning and growing and, dare I say, thriving. Um, some days it feels like it, um, some days more challenging than others, but yeah, our talk, not single to married was t really about that idea of not really feeling like a single person, you know, what as identical twins, you have this very intimate relationship with someone. And at least in our case, we were very, very close growing up. We were very, very similar and we shared a lot of experiences and lived life together. Um, so like we've, we mentioned a lot of times, we know that every twin's experience is unique, but this was our experience growing up. And um, we were even roommates in college. We studied abroad together. Um, and so transitioning from that to <laughs> married life um, was a big transition. It's still a transition. It doesn't feel like it's over. Um, and so it's it's been uh, definitely challenging. I think you know the transition to from single to married is challenging as it is. Uh, marriage is is a difficult uh, but rewarding and beautiful relationship. Um, but then you know the added element of being so used to sharing life with somebody else who knows you intimately, intricately, you know, has similar desires and needs and meets those needs and desires in very similar ways, you know, that's not necessarily what you're going to encounter with your spouse. It doesn't mean there's not some of that going on, but um, there's a lot more, uh, like, it, it, it takes a lot of work, you know, to start getting to that syncing up stage with your spouse. So um, anyway, so that's, yeah, just a little, uh, you know, sharing with folks for those who hadn't listened to that episode and hopefully uh, setting us up for, for diving into the topic today. Yeah, this is actually how I started chatting with Michelle, I think on Instagram, because I, it was so weird. I just kind of like put out to God in my mind that I like wanted to meet other identical twins who had gone through the transition of being single to being married and it's or not single or sorry not oh, yeah. single. <laughs> twins being married and and I just and then just like through divine intervention uh ended up connecting with Michelle and you know Amy and I are not married um but it's something we've been thinking about a lot over the last couple of years especially thinking about like having kids and marriage just was never something on our minds in our 20s we were like really secular in our 20s we're Christians now but we weren't before so we didn't really you know think about this as like a sacrament I didn't I had a lot of questions about why people would even get married I didn't really like understand it like that was kind of a whole journey for me and um then once I started to you know like uh think about it even farther I I, I never even, I don't think I even ever realized I was like sort of already married until I started thinking about marrying someone else <laughs> Wait, like I never even thought of us that way until I started thinking about going through life with someone else. And I was like, oh, wait, I actually like go through life with Amy. Like that's who I experience everyday life with. And all of my other friends, like most of them are married now and their transition to being married seemed really smooth. Like they're just mm -hmm. like, 
they've been alone their whole lives and they're like finally someone who will be there like every single day you know they're like so stoked to no longer be alone and I'm like wait I'm like sad thinking about this <laughs> like this is a totally different thing for me and no one can really understand except other twins yeah. so mm -hmm. there's yeah. a lot there oh yeah, yeah. it's been unique <laughs> yeah, yeah a lot of different angles yeah that that's so good and and I really I really appreciate the just the vulnerability of sharing like that's actually a real thing that we struggle with as as identical twins it's that, like the greatest curse cur sorry the greatest gifts are sometimes also the the greatest challenges right like it, our greatest blessings are also the things that are our greatest challenges and so it is the one of the greatest gifts in the world to have an identical twin sister uh, or identical twin fill in the blank you know if you're a boy or a girl and you have that type of intimate relationship is just unlike anything else it, that anyone can experience you're literally literally like one flesh and then you became these two people and there's just so much that that you've shared together that you know about each other uh that it, it's almost like you get to the place of just being able to you know just know one another without even speaking though there's also a lot of speaking too which informs that because you've shared so much that then you know you can kind of just know without even talking um and yet there's always more to talk about it's like i don't know it's hard to describe because for some people like well how could you? people would always say that to us like well how could you still have stuff to talk about well we do <laughs> there's, there's, there's still more to talk about together there's still more to like create and imagine and, and discuss. And we just, you know, that's just how it is. Um, and so it's, <clears throat> that's such an incredible gift and blessing. Um, and, and it's, that's also the why it's one of the greatest challenges, right? It's one of the greatest, I curse is too strong of a word, but it can feel, there can feel like a real kind of sense of like, this is so hard. This is a yeah. real, this is a real kind of like in having to let it go. Yeah. There's such a, and you know, Marilise and I did a talk on like dying to self and I, I, you know, I, I'm really interested in like philosophy, psychoanalysis, all of that. Um, I mean, though I'm not like super well versed in it, more so philosophy, but there's a real kind of ego that like, there's kind of a letting go of something that you've kind of used as your identity for so long, you know, and it's very, very painful, <laughs> you know, yeah. and the weird thing is, it's like, at the same time, it's, it's hard, but there's also like, well, you still get to have that relationship. So praise God for that. Like, it's not like you're completely severing and have to be in two different, you know, one person's in Siberia and the other person's in Honduras. Like you're still at least able to see each other, talk to each other daily, you know, and have that beautiful relationship, but things do shift dramatically because you're not living in the same physical space anymore you know there's you're not sharing all of your daily activities with one another and um so I don't know I guess it's just kind of a big life lesson in general about the things that either we you know it's, it's kind of like the things that one can be gifted with uh, or things that God has given you as actual real blessings we it, it's, it's always just kind of that reminder of like oh right this is actually gods and not mine to just keep as a possession, you know, but it's so human to want to just <laughs> clutch onto it because, because it's so good, you know, just like, it's so good. Why, why would I not like clutch onto it and like not let go? Um, but ultimately like we don't allow ourselves to, in a sense, kind of, um, grow, right. Like, and, and transform into, to more of who we're becoming if we just kind of lock into what we what we have been you know and this is general this this is true for everybody's life whether you're an identical twin or not like we always have to kind of allow for the <clears throat> for the change of life right that that then allows us to to grow and ultimately i mean from all of our perspectives to ultimately rely more on god right god is the constant he's going to be the same today yesterday yesterday today and tomorrow and yet he's also the greatest mystery of all so it's, it's incredible god gets is this amazing um, he satisfies those needs of stability, but also of the mystery. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's definitely, um, I mean, I think, again, these are life lessons that anyone can, can hopefully recognize and resonate with. But I think we, I think we just feel like this, this transition is just, I think that in main, mainstream culture, we're talking even less and less realistically about the transition to marriage as it is. But then for us, for us girls who have this type of unique relationship, there's just no talking about it. No, yeah. nobody's talking, yeah. about nobody's talking about this yeah. no one talks about it and I've even thought like once I do go through with marriage and have some time with it under my belt I would love to write a book yes. for other twins about this because yes. just what's been coming up in me as I like think about this is it's been hard it's a lot of anxiety and I feel very mm -hmm. alone because like mm -hmm. when you express anything about like you know fears around marriage mm -hmm. or like anything the culture just like looks at you like something's wrong with you and like it seems like the transition is just the way that the culture like 
positions it is it, it's all just like happiness and it's like the end of your story and you found your person and like it's great and like and I'm just like that's not gonna be I've had this like realization where it's like that's not really gonna be my experience of marriage because I'm also gonna almost be experiencing I don't want to say a death but because it's not gonna die but like it's some like loss some loss sacrifice. yeah it's gonna be a lot more sacrifice maybe than I mean, marriage is sacrifice for everybody, but there is, when you have a twin, there's a whole another dimension of sacrifice that's going to take place. And like, it will pretty, pretty intensely disrupt your life, I think. I mean, I'm not married, so I don't know, but this is what I'm anticipating. It's like the way we have so much uh, harmony and like symbiosis between us. Like we just navigate day-to-day -day life very easily together because we've known each other for 30 years. And we, I talked to a priest about this actually, and he talked about how twins are, he said it very beautifully and I'll probably butcher it, but um, that it is hard for us to be apart because like our bodies are, we're, we're one at one point, you said this earlier and like, we're, we knew each other before we knew our mother, right? Like yeah. that's yeah. pretty far back. So we've known each other beyond 30 years. Yeah. So that's a lot of time to like learn one another and get in harmony with each other. And like to do that with like a spouse, it's like, uh, you were talking about this on your podcast. It's like a whole nother learning process, like learning how I am with this person um like you know I know with Julie I can just like put on a song and I know she likes it and like we have the same taste and like but with when I'm dating someone I'm like are, are, do you like this like thing it? too I'm like yeah. it's not as smooth right there's more almost I'm, almost everything and like when I was dating in my 20s I wasn't thinking about marriage I was just very immature and just like having fun with guys and not really serious and that seemed like when I wasn't thinking about about it being like a lifelong thing it was like I could like relax into it more but now that I'm thinking about it being a lifelong thing I'm like magnifying like every little way that like we're not the same and I'm like but Amy and I are the same in this way and like that was does, does this mean it's the wrong guy like I don't know like because because Amy and I just have like just utter harmony with with a day to day and we like feel like the same things excite us this is another <laughs> thing I've noticed a lot lately like with men is that like men are more like stoic they're less emotional just, just naturally like how men and women are different how we're made um men are more interested in like things rather than people and women are more interested in people rather than things and like even like aesthetics I think we're like more into Amy's an artist and we really like to like decorate our house like all this stuff it's like the things that like excite us and like get us going are the same but with men it's like it's like oh like look at this like thing and they're like oh that's cool but it's not the same where she's like oh yeah yeah totally. you know what I mean like she matches my like energy and enthusiasm and men don't and I'm like how am I how am I the rest of my life without that in my house <laughs> <laughs> yeah so good. It's hot. yeah it's 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 so it's so much more to think about than I like thought it was gonna be right it was an it was an intense like real I had to like have the realization that like getting married is going to be like different for you than for most like singleton women for singleton women right like it it was just kind of I don't know it's like humbling to realize you're different I guess it's like you know most people don't it's humbling and beautiful but like you said it's you said in one of your podcasts, it, it, this actually creeped me out. I forget which one of you said it, but that getting, it's like losing your arm, losing mm -hmm. your, right okay. your right arm. I, I have used that exact phrase when she lived in California. I was like, I feel like someone fell off my right arm. Yeah. Yes. It was so weird. Oh, it's like, that's like, so crazy. crazy. Great, great. I was blown away. I was like, Julie, did you hear what she yeah. just said? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. It, it must be a twin thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. I guess because it's like your right arm is your most like useful yes. like body part right so like that's the best metaphor for it yeah. um but then you said like it and then it's like learning you know I don't even know how to pick up a cup with this new arm no, like, you're like <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a great metaphor so oh, yeah. thank you I'm glad it was helpful and I'm glad you 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 know you came to that metaphor yourself and have thought through that as well and it's it's very fitting because um, I think, I think that it's, there, there's just something that everyone could understand. Suddenly you can't use your right arm. You know, you can't like, what would you do? You know, <laughs> like, how do you even just yeah. do the simple, the basic stuff, you know, like, and I think there's a real, I, I think this kind of also speaks to, it's hard because for people who ha have not had that experience, honestly, like some of the things I can struggle with in you know, basically fumbling around, fumbling around without my right arm, if we want to just still like push this metaphor, is that it can, I can almost feel like I'm just weak. Like, I'm just, I'm just incapable. Like, I'm not, I'm just not enough. Like, I'm not able to do enough. I'm not able to do what the other people do, you know? And mm -hmm. it's like, I think that's, there's something humbling about that. Um, but also can feel debilitating, because you're like, 
well, what's wrong with me, right? Um, but I think like often what's wrong with you is what's right with you. And so the thing that 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 is problematic is also one of your strengths. You're just being put in a different, a totally different context, right? It's like you're, it's, it's about how you're getting to use that um, strength. And, you know, honestly, like maybe it's a bit more to overcome, but when you are able to, there, you know, you, there's a strength that you can develop through that. But I think it is important to realize that, um, though, yes, none of us can do it all and we will fumble a lot through life. Um, it, it's, it's not as if like, I don't know, it's, it's important to realize that you are, I don't know how to put it, it is a kind of handicap. Like you're, start, you're starting at a different starting place than most single people entering into relationship. And, yep. you know, so it does feel kind of like a handicap. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, and that's to the like point you, of like leaving a limb, but yeah. Like you've lost some of your strength. Like Julie is like a point of strength for me. Like, I don't know. And we have this like really interesting dynamic with where we're very entertaining with people and like, I don't, I don't yeah, energetic. We have, like, a, says we're energetic together and we yeah. like, and I didn't oh. really in banter. I, we have like banter. I, I thought that that energy we bring to people and that like entertainment factor um, was like me, but it's us. Right. So yes. it's like, it's not yes. really just me. I have some of it when I'm alone, but I'm way more muted when I'm yeah. alone with Julie. Like I'm, <sighs> Yeah. So it's almost like you're forfeiting like something that's a a real gift. Yeah. In mm -hmm. in you and how I was also thinking about how like how we navigate the world. When you navigate the world as a twin with your twin next to you, different doors open. Like people will be like, Oh, you're a twin. And like we got like a tour of a brewery recently because like people thought it was cool that we were twins and they were like, Well, do you want to come see the, how we brew the beer? You know, and, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and if I was just like a singleton, that I don't even think they would have like thought that we, I was interesting and like wanted to engage. You know what I mean? So just like yeah. the way, it, it can go the other way too, though. I remember growing up, sometimes we wouldn't get invited places because it'd be like there's two of them yeah. and then there's only oh, one. Yeah. one That's like, true. Stuff like that. Yeah. So I don't know. But, but it's yeah. just there's like a, kind of a, a there's some magic to navigating the world as a twin and watching people react to you because people get so excited they're like you're twins oh my god and you kind of like just your very existence brings like joy to people when they like see both of you and figure out that you're twins they like get really excited I think they're they're seeing a part of God's mystery when they look at you they're like yeah. they're like whoa like it, and it's I don't know yeah sort of a, yeah but then if I'm going to be navigating the world with a husband by my side, like that's those moments, they're not going to disappear entirely, but it's going to be like much less. And I've dealt with a lot of like fear based. Okay. So I went from being like very prideful and being like, marriage will be easy for me because I'm a twin to now being like, oh, it, I've actually had fears of like, can I even get married? Mm -hmm. I'm already married, like mm -hmm. in a way. Like, but I don't get things from my twin that I would get from a husband. Like, obviously, we can't have children. Like, there's like, you know, and like, it's like a platonic it's marriage. It's like this weird, and and <laughs> and just having fear on that though. Like, am I am I even capable? Because I always thought that like marriage with a husband would just happen naturally, and now I'm realizing it's going to have to be a conscious choice. I'm curious how it was for both of you. Like, how the trend. Like, more about that point of like one of you has a boyfriend and the other has a boyfriend if that happened at the same time if you had mm -hmm. thoughts like she described yeah oh that was all so good and I, I just want to say really quick I feel like Mary Lee's and I can resonate so much with what you said on the energy level like we yes. together are like this just this like exponential energy together and so when we're around people it's like really enlivening for them and that was always really yeah. fun for us and we just didn't you know we just enjoyed that we enjoyed seeing people like you know spark up and like you know get just being mm -hmm. like infused with some sort of sense of joy. And, you know, we knew always that that was like ultimately from God, you know, we knew that that was something that God was used like channeling through us. Uh, but it definitely like, it just completely takes off like a wildfire fire when we're together. Like it, it's, yeah. it's definitely something that we, we can resonate with for sure. I can, oh, yeah. tell, you, I I can, can tell. tell. We're all like bursting. To yeah. Yeah. With, with validation. yeah. But I think <laughs> yes. energetic, like we are and like enthous enthusiastic, yeah. you know? So I, I fully, yeah. And yeah. And creative twins, you, right? Mm -hmm. Like mi mystic sisters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another set of yeah, I, 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 no, it, it was so beautiful to hear your guys, your experience, because it's, it's so similar to us. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, with, with dating and then getting married, um, you know, we were relatively young, we were 24 when we got married, and I started dating my husband when I was, mm, I 
just turned 19 or just before I was about to turn 19. So, you know, um, we, we were, and we, you know, we, and Michelle, even though I don't know if you're 19 when you met Daniel, Shelley, like maybe 20, um, maybe later in a year, later on when you were 19, but I'm just saying that we were both all in, high, all in college, you know, and so it's this very, um, I don't know, you're just growing so much. You're still learning so much. Um, I think, you know, sometimes looking back, I'm like, should I have gotten married so young? But, you know, the reality is, it's like, I did. <laughs> and, here I am. and I'm, you know, um, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm so thankful for Jesse. And I, I do, I do feel synchronicity with him. Um, but it's taken a lot of work and, and a lot of hard things too. And, uh, you know, we've had, um, uh, a big challenge in our marriage because of some of my sin that sort of a sin cycle that I, I had been caught up in um, and not recently confessed but about two years ago it sort of came to a breaking point um, and that's a big part of my testimony as well um, but anyway that you know that it's you can and that's why I would you know encourage twin identical twins that it is very possible to enjoy some of the things that you enjoy in your in your twinship with your spouse. Um, it just doesn't necessarily come as naturally. It does take work. It takes some hard conversations and some, um, yeah, growing pains that, you know, come along with all of that. Um, but yeah, we, we were not allowed to date until we were 16. And, you know, I, I almost wish my mom died, you know, if I had been smarter, I probably wouldn't have even dated yet at that stage, you know, cause my first boyfriend just wasn't the right fit for me, but, and, and I knew that early on, but, you know, was sort of headstrong and stubborn and thinking, oh, I want to, you know, I want to date someone and have this experience that other people have. Um, and, you know, that's, what's so crazy about, the influences around us. You know, um, we both grew up in the church. We both grew up um, believing uh, in Jesus as our personal savior. And we're young when we pray to receive Jesus into our hearts. Um, and, but, you know, there's still such a strong influence from the culture, from movies and books. And, um, and it's, it starts so young. Um, and then even, even then, you know, what your parents have seen in their lives um, and then what they're sort of living out in their marriage, um, you know, even though our mom and dad are believers, they also have had a lot of challenges in their marriage too, you know, and so you're not really, um, and not, not that anybody is, but all of us have flawed parents in that sense that even if they're believers and they believe that Christ is the center of their marriage, they may be struggling through some really big things that you are the witness to as children. Um, so anyway, all that to say, um, you know, we, we, I did start dating when I was 16 and then, um, like sort of, I, I was sort of the twin that had the longer standing relationships, whereas Michelle was sort of dating different guys. Um, and so I think that was definitely a early on sort of like difference between us, um, that I was sort of the one with the con a steady boyfriend, if you will. And Michelle was just sort of floating around between different guys, a lot of guys trying to get her attention and pursuing her and, um, yeah, I mean, it was just funny, you know, uh, the first boys we dated, though, were actually really good friends. And so that was an interesting. Um, but Michelle's that petered out a little bit sooner, a lot sooner than the the guy, the dating relationship I had with um, with the, the guy I was with. So anyway, yeah, we we were, you know, dating guys, but it was um, I mean, I don't really I, it's almost hard to explain like go back and think like, how did that affect our twin ship then? And it, and it did, um, but it's, it's all like sort of not pretend, but it's like, you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're playing. playing. You're just, yeah, kind of, you're, you're playing. playing. You're, still, you're young, yeah, you right. know, and it, it doesn't seem to, it doesn't, it's not like a, this weighty, you know, like, oh, going out on some dates with this guy in high school, like it's, it's like, you still come home to your twin sister and tell her all about it. You know, it's like, you're, you're still always there. You're still there for each other in the most intimate ways. Um, even as you're connecting with this, another human being. Um, but you know, in, in college, we, I guess that's the first time we started veering a little bit more in the sense of, you know, studying different things, but we were still in college together, roommate, roommates and, um, attending the same, uh, we were attending InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, so we had a lot of extracurriculars, was the same, and, um, but yeah, I guess uh, that, that, I mean, I started dating Jesse my second year of college, and, um, you know, that's who I ended up marrying, you know, so I was, you know, like I said, I'm just about to turn, nine, or like a few months before night, turning 19 when I started dating Jesse, and even though we, he and I did have a break, um, yeah, we, we, God led us into marriage, and so, 
Um, and I think Michelle, yeah, I think Michelle and I probably felt like we wanted to, yeah, we, we get along pretty easily with a lot of different types of people. And I think that's part of like, you know, for me and Michelle, like Shelly got along, Michelle got along with Jesse, like they were, they were buddies, you know, and um, in the same way, like Daniel was like a brother, you know, we, 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 we're, we're I don't know how to say that. I don't want to say like, oh, look at us. This is, we're so good at this, but we just tend to connect with people pretty easily. Like it's, it's, we, it's not hard for us to um, connect and feel, um, yeah, close to somebody or feel like we, we get along pretty well with other people. Um, and so anyway, in that, in that respect, it's like, yeah, it was, it was nice to be around Jesse when Michelle got to be with us. Um, and like for me to be there with Michelle and Daniel, um, Think one thing we probably could have say, seen as an early indication is that our husbands are very different but they got along too in their own ways but they are quite different as far as you know they're just natural like they're how they spend time and what they enjoy doing um even they're just if you met them you know like how introverted or extroverted they they seem um so yeah but like again i think we as human beings it's not like you have this one soulmate person out there and it's you could marry any number of people yeah, and yeah. you know and there's this really great um there's this really great resource that my husband and i tapped into um i guess it was like a year and a half ago and the gentleman was saying he he's a counselor um works with married couples and he he put out this book this workbook anyway he was saying that like everybody has like a set of letters, if you want to think of it this way. And so like, you might be married to a guy who's like a B, G and X and Z, you know, and like those characteristics can fit, you know, can gel with certain parts of you or are good support to you, given some of your strengths and weaknesses, you know, but there's going to be issues with those set of letters, you know, and then you can think, oh, well, I should just get married to some other set of letters, you know, it's going to work better. But with that set of letters comes another, you know, comes other issues, right? So it's not that it's not that there's like not. I, I don't want to say that there isn't somebody who's more compatible with you, that like just on the surface level and and even deeper, like you know what you believe and your like fun, you know fun foundational um, things like that. But you know get, if that's already decided, if it's two people with the same beliefs, you know, same basic, you know, same values more or less, but like these different letters are changing and shifting. It's like yeah, you know. I think at least for Michelle and I, we tend to connect with a lot of different letters. So that's why we are married to men who are pretty, pretty different to each other, you know, and it's because we tend to feel pretty connected with a lot of different types of people. So I don't know if that answers your question at all, but just to sort of give you some senses of, you know, like just even about our husbands, you know, what they're like and how that um, has impacted our, our, our relationship, Michelle and I. Wow. Yeah. I just want to say something really, really quick. I think we kind of like hit the ground running with the change. You know, I think we didn't really think a lot about it. And I don't know if that's good or bad. I, in some ways, I guess it forced us. It's like you just got pushed out of the nest. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, I don't know. I guess you have to make it work. And we don't always do that perfectly. God knows that. But, you know, you have to sort of just try <laughs> your best and mm -hmm. learn through your mistakes and your own failures and trusting that you, there's always, there's always room for, for improvement, right? Like you can always be doing better to, to get to that place of being in sync with, uh, with your, your husband. Um, and, and, you know, try to, try to like, just enjoy too, like try, enjoy this new person who is, um, you know, you obviously like are, you had this, this draw to them in the first place and trying mm -hmm. to really remember like what, a, what a special person each individual is, but this particular person who, you know, has kind of like, you have really, well, if you're going to be married, you've, you've chosen them, right? Like it's a, it's a, you chose to, to be with them. And so to really kind of, um, I don't know, really kind of yield yourself to that, like just, just give into that and let, like, let the process unfold before you and sort of be, allow yourself to be present there. Um, I think we would probably all struggle with comparison more, you know, than, than some people. Um, and I think, I, I guess it's just, you know, again, like I said, we were, we were younger. So I think it, like I said, we kind of hit the ground running or, you know, we kind of, it was like a, just, it, it just maybe in some ways the advantage is we've just had, you know, more time with it now. And <laughs> you start to just have to make, uh, you know, get used to new things. And that's, that's okay. You start to appreciate what you had and start to learn how to have an appreciation for the newness of, of, you know, the, the marriage relationship. Um, 
and then, you know, for us, like we're also mothers that adds a whole new dimension of newness. It's, I, this is the thing. Life is constantly, there's so much flux and there's so much that changes and there's so much loss. Um, but there's also a lot that's also gained. You know, there's a lot that's inwardly gained by your, your kind of spiritual development, um, which again, is always, you know, being perfected. Um, but it's like, yeah, I think, I think that in, I remember, I remember so distinctly this memory uh, with, with Marilise and Jesse, I was like, I don't know, I was dropping them off somewhere or something like that. Or like we were dropping, maybe we were dropping Jesse off where he, he lives. And I remember like sitting in the car and Jesse and Marilise like, you know, walked so she could say goodbye to him. And they were just chatting. And then, you know, he gave her a hug. And I just remember in that moment, I remember what I was wearing, like it was a very distinct moment for me that I was like, oh, like it was, it was very powerful. Cause I was like, oh, okay. Like I, I have to let go now. Like I have to let go of Marilise. And it was, it was a very hard moment, but it was also like, I trust you, God. Like, I know that you have her and she's ultimately yours. So I will have to trust that you will always take care of her. And there were opportunities to have to trust, like when Marilise went to Peru by herself for the first time, like we were apart for the first time, really. And it's like, those were, those were chances to just have to like, literally be very, feel very helpless. You couldn't really do anything. I can't be there. Like, what if so, you know, all the things go through your head and it's just like, well, I have to trust that she's in God's hands. And, you know, I, I think that's just, we're kind of given time and time again, opportunities to do that. We're not going to do it perfectly. We often put things back into our hands that we've let go of, but we, it, it, it's still, you know, we're going to be presented with many, many opportunities for that. And I think sometimes just reminding, it's helpful for me to remind myself that life is full of that. It's not just like, oh, there's just this one thing you're going to have to try to overcome. No, there's going to be another thing that you'll have to try to work through again. So, that that can help me uh, with 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 just just thinking about like the transitions and, and whatnot but yeah I guess there's some pros and cons to us being younger but part of it was just kind of like we didn't think that much about it yeah, I, I was gonna say I I kind of wish that was our situation because I am giving it so much thought that I'm worried I'm gonna like analysis paralysis myself out of doing it you know what I mean like I'm just like oh but like, I really want to have a family. I really want to have a husband and children. And, but I'm like thinking about it so much that it's going to have to be this like conscious choice. And it's, that's not even how I envisioned marriage would be when I was younger. Like I mm -hmm. thought it would just be like obvious and natural that I'd be moving through life with a guy. And like, it would just be, I just thought it would be something else rather than like this explicit kind of break and conscious choice. And I've, I've actually also had the same thought of like, I need to let God take care of Amy because I always have this impulse to take care of her mm -hmm. and to just like make sure she's okay. And, and it, it, it's almost, it's weird because it can almost feel like a mother to a child sort mm -hmm. of thing. There's all, like, all these weird different elements of things, but um, um, where I, I struggle to just like trust that she's okay. And I've gotten better at it. I think I, I've dated guys where you were like, worried because he wasn't like a very good guy yeah, and it, yeah. and it helps like, when you date good guys yeah so <laughs> that helps but yeah, yeah. yeah. Trust him entirely but yeah not hurt her but. the lessons young women must learn yeah but um <laughs> yeah but you mentioned loss like I think that is helpful to hear like just the acknowledgement that there like will be some loss and there always is loss in life but then there's also gain as well yeah. um, mm -hmm. that's helpful yeah okay. I, I think okay. so oh no go go I was going to say also just, yeah, struggling with comparison yeah. is hard. Like, be, like to think like, well, I, oh, oh, like there's something missing in my relationship because like when Amy and I are together, it's like this, but when he and I are together, it's not like, it's like a different mm -hmm. thing. And like, and just finding all those little like points of comparison um, are, which I think would ultimately be like destructive to a marriage, you know, like <laughs> people say like not to even compare your spouse or your marriage to other people's spouses and marriages right and I loved the metaphor you gave about the letters um because I think that also when I was growing up I always thought that like I would just be like hit over the head with exactly who to marry and they'd be like perfect and it would just be like super obvious and and it's become more of a thing like oh like everybody's different no one's gonna have like every single quality I would want they're like not gonna be perfect like we live in a fallen world they're, they're gonna struggle against sin <laughs> like they're not yeah. gonna be this, like perfect savior that like rescues me and then I move into this space of eternal happiness like that's yeah. not and that's how I always yeah. thought marriage was I was like I'm gonna meet someone he's gonna be great and then it's just gonna be like 
I'm gonna be happy forever. Like, you know what I mean? It's like such a childish the media idea. fairy tale. Like, yeah. 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 It is. Yeah, it yeah. is. It so there's is. like other even with dealing with the realization of being not single um and wanting to get married. And then also I've been working through my false beliefs I think I've had about like what marriage is and yeah. how to choose a spouse. And there's not gonna be like God's not going to like come down from the sky and be like, here, this is because he perfect gives, person. He gives you free will. Like, <laughs> yeah. He wants you to choose yeah. too. Yeah. Right. Like, he's not a tyrant. Like, marriage. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's, I was going to say this actually, this conversation is quite modern in a sense of what marriage has, has traditionally been. Looking back centuries ago, it um, it's it's only in a relatively recent phenomena of, of being a ro romantic uh, matches. Um, marriage has been traditionally uh, more for economic reasons, for um, sometimes for like what's Cleopatra and who did she marry? And that was to like unite kingdoms or something. Anyway, yeah, the point being true. that, yeah, yeah, Cleopatra That's and- cool. Arranged marriages, yeah. yeah. I sometimes yeah. I think that'd be easier. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I, yes. Just this yeah. Yeah, especially as a twin, I'm like, oh, just someone choose for me. <laughs> I have to do it, you know. Yeah. But. Well, also because yeah, and I was actually just speaking about that the other day to a friend, like the fact that arranged marriages aren't so bad because part of what they do is the legwork for you. You know, it's it's the finding out how compatible you are regarding raising your children and um, you know, what are some of the values of how you keep up a home and you know, because usually arranged marriages are families that have connections already, you know. Um, and so that um, makes a big difference, you know, when it, it takes out some of the, it, it reduces the juxtaposition that can be there, what that you, you know, when you enter marriage and you realize, oh my goodness, you know, uh, my, like just little things that happen that you're like, okay, that's not how we do it. <laughs> that's not how we do it. That's not how we grew up, but you know, that's okay. I'm gonna, you know, and that's, that's part of it is just, you know, even arranged marriage, not arranged marriage, you know, you're always, even when you're in arranged marriage, of course, there's going to be still surprises and differences that come up. But yeah, that's, that's what happens. I feel like with arranged marriages, it's just like that legwork and your parents are already very, you know, like in arranged marriage, does it's like these two families coming together to just sort of discern whether or not this is a right, a good match. And so, you know, some parts of a, um, a relationship, the challenges that can come up for a married couple are like other people's fears projected on you, you know, like, I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but, um, you know, from our own experience as well, like it, it's not, I think, you know, we're the little girls, the babies of the family, you know, and that, and that can be very difficult for parents to let, let their little girls go and, you know, to feel that this person is adequate for, you know, to take care of them. And, um, and, you know, so that, that's sort of not as much part of the equation when it's an arranged marriage, because it's like, yeah, these, the, the families themselves, the parents have decided that this is a good fit. And of course, in modern arranged marriages, the couple still has their say whether or not they agree or not. But um, anyway, that's not the case with romantic matches in, in Westernized societies. And so in America, you know, our parents may have very little I mean, it's not that we're certainly we were pretty young, so we were inviting our mother and father into the process of getting to know these young men, but it, it ultimately still was our decision, you know, and, um, and so, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, arranged marriages can feel some somewhat helpful in some respects, um, but I think something to bring back to what Shelly was saying about the enjoying um, this person that you're with and about the whole analogy of like missing your right arm is that be when you work at this relationship and when there's this moment of, you know, when these moments of synchronicity come up or shared enthusiasm or something like that, it's, it's very sweet. It's, it's very enjoyable because you know, it's been earned, you know, it's like you've worked towards that and it's, it's a very sweet reward to enjoy together. I'll say that from my experience. Um, you know, like I love when we step into, I don't know, like we step into a, a restaurant or we're, walking down some, I don't know, wherever we're, me and Jesse are, and he'll make some observation that I was thinking about, you know, and that's, that's a twin thing, you know, I feel like Michelle will say something, like, I was just thinking that, I was just making that observation in my head, you know, and I love when that happens with Jesse, because it's like, we are, are very different in many ways, but he, we, it just shows you that 
you know, we are in tune with one another. We, the Holy Spirit is allowing us to be in tune with one another. And, um, you know, we, we are having more shared, more and more shared experiences, but just to give that grace, you know, to be able to enjoy that person, whatever set of letters they are, um, and realizing, trusting that God is, if it's a prayerful decision, God has led you to this person. And that's, that's ultimately going to be for good and for God's glory. And you don't have to, uh, you know, be afraid. Um, you know, obviously when some clashes come up or differences come up you know it's 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 extremely important to be able to pray through those things and talk about them you know that's why I say communication is key and I know it's like it's an it seems so obvious right but sometimes married couples are not talking very much um, about really important matter issues um, because you know it, it's it's hard to talk about things with somebody who doesn't know you the same way as your twin does and I would say again specifically talking about twins who are in a now married um, dynamic it's like you didn't really have to, or, or there was no fear to bring, and we've talked about this in our previous podcasts, you know, you're never afraid to talk about, it. like anything is, is everything is on the table, like there's nothing off limits, there's just, yeah, you don't, you don't have to fear about talking about anything, because yeah, there's, your twin is going to love you, and they're just going to be there for you, and they're going to understand, and they're going to get it, and it doesn't mean that there's not going to be some um, sometimes some, what's the word, like feedback that they're going to give you or even corrective feedback. You know, I know M Michelle has had to do that with me sometimes in my life and, you know, but I haven't been afraid to talk to her. I mean, I might've felt like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go over. Michelle doesn't know that I'm doing this or whatever. <laughs> I have to confess. The confession is not easy, but it's, it's different confessing to your twin sister than to confessing to your spouse. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot hard. It's a lot harder, but I think, yeah, establishing that early on with your spouse saying, you know, I really want to be able to talk about everything and any, anything and everything. I want that to be game for conversation. I, I want, and I need um, for us to get, make you, uh, make each other feel emotionally safe to do that. Um, I think that's a very uh, important part of a healthy relationship um, and it's not a given necessarily. Um, and it, even if it is a given, we, you know, we can start to believe lies, you know, cause that's what the devil does. I say like the devil and his D's, you know, the devil distracts, he, he, uh, he's divisive. Um, he deceives and he, he's always trying to get us into this weird distorted place in our heads, um, instead of into, you know, into this place of clarity. And I think for me in my marriage, I started to believe that our marriage was not a safe place to be honest about some things that I was feeling. And, you know, unfortunately, that that's something I saw modeled a little bit in, you know, in our in our parents' marriage and and sometimes even in movies and other relationships. And, and um, you know, and it was very it was very, very unfortunate. It had it, it resulted in a lot of hurt. Um, but I had to sort of say that to my husband, like, I don't but I don't know, is it OK if I just talk about what I'm feeling about like this, that, or the other. And he's like, yeah, why have I ever said otherwise? And it's like, no, you never did. But somehow I just read that from you, you know, and like, you're, yeah. you know, sometimes you're like reading things into a situation that aren't really there. It's because you haven't really explicitly talked about them. And so that's why, I don't know, I would say that's something that is, especially as a twin, you know, with your partner is to say, you know, I've been in this type, type of dynamic. I've been in this twin relationship where I can really say anything. I, I mean, I can say anything. I can, nothing is off limits. And I feel very safe. You know, it's, it's a very, very emotionally safe dynamic and relationship. And I, I would like to foster that. I want to foster that in our, in our marriage, in our relationship together. Um, so, you know, if I had to like sit down and write a book, like you're talking about Julie, like, like writing a book about, you know, to sort of offer some advice to twins um, as they make this transition, I would say that these are some of the conversations and topics to talk about early is, you know, you know, sharing a little bit about your twin experience has been like, so that just also to help inform your spouse, you know, so that they're not caught off guard because they may not know because they were a single, you, normally they're a single, singleton going into marriage, you know, they're not going to, they, they may not realize, you know, what all you talked about or what, how it felt when you talked about things, you know what I mean? Or how their body language might be sending a different message. They don't, you know, they may not know those things. Yeah. So I don't know, that's just some of some things that I've, I've learned along the way. Um, there's just many, many other things too, but I, I guess with a twinship, it's like ingrained that it's inherently safe, that you don't really have to, you can almost take it for granted. You don't have to build it really. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. And then with a, a new person, it's like, it takes cultivation, I guess. And like more communication, like things you would have to communicate things to your husband that you just wouldn't have to communicate to your twin so mm -hmm. practice and adjusting. I can imagine. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I've also been, something I also was thinking about when I was like really thinking about getting married is I was like, I don't, I, I was like, our, obviously my sister and I have like grown together and a lot of our like spiritual journey happened side by side and like going through like the the like nihilistic culture of San Francisco and then coming out on the other side of that and and finding the Christian uh, Christianity and all these things like we've been growing and moving together just sort of naturally and but the ways that I want to grow in like the next half of my life is like I want to learn how to be a wife and mother and I like can't do that with Amy right and yet it feels and so it's almost like our like sameness would inhibit my growth in other places but it's also just so comfortable that it's really hard to consciously choose the uncomfortable thing um especially when that's like your day-to-day -day intimate life right we're not talking about like starting a new job where i could like quit if it doesn't work out we're talking about like joining my life to another person making a vow before God and going through the sacrament and, and like not being able to like be like that, that doesn't, I don't like that. We're, I'm going to go back. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, and even before when I was dating, it was always like, well, if it doesn't work out, I have someone else to go be with. Like I'm never actually alone. Whereas mm -hmm. like other people, when they break up, like they're back to being alone. And maybe that's normal, natural for them because they're used to it. But for me, it's like, I always have someone to return to. And um, I, I guess there's like a fear there that like that will always be a temptation if it gets hard with my spouse or, or something like, well, I have this comfortable thing to return to where I don't have to be alone. Um, and, and yet also acknowledging that if I do want to grow in ways that will like grow a family and allow me to go through stages of life that I really want to experience, that does have to happen like separate from her. Um, and it's just hard. Um, again, I, I, I kind of wish we were like you and had just like plunged into marriage without thinking about it because the level with which I'm thinking about it, I'm just like, oh, I wish I wasn't thinking about it this way. <laughs> I'm wondering, like, I, I'm curious, like, day to day, like you two, like how much you're in contact and like how often you guys see each other, like stuff like that. Yeah. So we live three hours away or just a little bit over three hours away from each other. And I would say that, I mean, most mornings we're trying to get in touch with each other pretty early. So um, we, we talk to each other, I would say every day, although um, maybe on the weekends, like a Friday or a Saturday, we, we don't get in touch if some things, if things are busy. Um, but generally speaking, we, we have um, like a, also we have a group with our mom we're very close with our mom too so and that's actually like sort of another way of like con keeping connected the two of us um, so yeah we've just always been very close with her and so we have like a mm and m her name is Maria Rosa so an mm and m whatsapp group so like we're we're there you know sort of we try and catch my mom early as well and sometimes we try a three-way call with her um, but yeah I would say we're we're in touch um, we might not get to like, like video chat every single day but we're definitely messaging in touch with each other every single day except again occasionally a busy weekend or something one or one or two days that's very rare like two days is pretty long for us to not be in touch honestly um <laughs> that makes sense yeah, I, I feel like even if it's like two days where we don't talk like we'll one of us will end up sending a message like late yeah. at night once the kids are going yeah. to be like hey like hey, how are yeah. you doing you're like you know like it's usually we'll send end up sending some sort of correspondence even through like yeah. the times so when we we don't get to have a call so. yeah and then being that we live three hours away we we try to see each other once a month and um that usually just works out pretty we, like we don't sit there in january and map you know schedule out the whole year um but we tend to be pretty intentional about that so that we see each other um, once a month and usually summertime we'll try for like a little bit more of an extended stay so i was at i was down in um, where michelle lives um just recently for what like a long long weekend um you know sun uh, and I'd like yeah and i'd yeah. come up before that so like I was up where Mary Lee's lives for a couple of days and then she came, then I went down like it was like a night we weren't together and then she came down and then we were together for a couple more days. So it ended up being, I guess, a week in total week. of yeah. being together and that was, or just about a week and that was really, really nice. Yeah. It's wow. nice. How, did you, how did you end up living three hours away? Was it like work, like husbands or? Yeah. We yeah. ended, we just ended up like moving to the places that our husband's families are. So yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, thankfully they're both in Virginia, or yeah, they're, they're both in the same state, but like it's it's just that it's not the same town. So, yeah, right. yeah, it's not the same town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 
Oh, I'm sorry. And, I was, this has been another challenge, just like geography, because in, in the past, like my mother, when she and all her sisters got married, they all married guys in the same town and they've all just been here their whole lives living next door to each other. And yeah. in the modern world, that's really, especially with dating and having the values that I have and the modern world being what it is, you kind of have to look harder to find people who share your values and um, they're going to be farther away we found over the past like three years that dating we find men who are just farther and farther away just because huh, of interesting our yeah and and our a lot more long distance dating going on a lot more and yeah. like meeting yeah people across very far distances and so then the geography thing comes into play where it's like well you know we would love to like have our husbands and raise children next to each other but like the likelihood of that is feels low like um, you know, our husbands will have their own desires or work or whatever it is. And, and at this, and it's like, you can't be negotiate. I've been thinking a lot about how I won't be able to negotiate my life with Amy anymore. I'm going to be negotiating it with somebody else. Right. And they have to be the number one, like priority and the number one, like consideration rather than like, oh, but I want to stay here because Amy's here, you know, because mm -hmm. that's like putting her at number one. Um, and it's just really challenging. So I, I think in the past, I, maybe I'm romanticizing, but I'm just like, oh, I wish I was like growing up in an era like my mother, where like everybody got married a lot younger and stayed in their hometown. And now mm -hmm. everybody, like, I know so many people that they get married and they move like immediately it's just mm -hmm. like you know maybe it's his work or her work or whatever it is um and people really don't grow up in like extended family communities anymore or, mm -hmm. or they don't live their entire lives in extended family communities like was very common like 50 years ago mm -hmm. um so like that's this added like modern challenge of wanting to get married as a twin is that there's no guarantee that you'll end up geographically close and i think three hours is like pretty good um yeah considering yeah. Some yeah. people been dating and stuff it's like 2,000 miles you know <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah like east coast west coast like yeah. it's like crazy yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'm we're praying that doesn't happen and we can be reasonably close to make it like, as long a day trip you know would be nice like, yeah just, as long as it's a day trip that would be good yeah but, yeah, yeah it's, it's a challenge and, and I think that's you know obviously part of the role as a wife is you are um you're prioritizing your spouse and you are submitting in some ways. You're both going to be making compromises, both husband and wife. But, you know, there are going to be ways that it's our biblical call to submit. And it's not a bad thing. It's 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 a beautiful thing. Um, but I, I think the earlier on you have conversations with your spouse, the better. I mean, I think, you know, thankfully, Michelle and I ended up being in the same state. We When we got married, I was actually in, a, I was up a little further north than her. And that was, I think that was really hard. I mean, just our very, very first, you know, months and years of marriage being like, what was it, Michelle, six hours away or something like yeah, that? Five, six, six and a half. Yeah, I guess about six hours away. Hours. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm sure that was even more challenging. And then also Michelle changing from like living at university town to a farm. So yeah. it's like, what a change. That's a huge yeah. change right there. Huge change. Uh, <laughs> very big difference and I was when I first got married I was living close to my mom and dad like maybe 25 minutes away from them it's still attending the church that I attended as a child you know so I had a lot of like very familiar things as I entered my marriage that was I was thankful for and um yeah but just to say that you know even though our our role is submission to God first and foremost and then you know to our husbands we I think you you know definitely can start you know you can talk to your your who you're dating and say hey you know my my twin relationship is very important to me and you know I do really look forward to be able to share in life together you know even as we cleave, leave and cleave you know as they say like to uh, start your two families um but yeah just because again like the sooner you talk about it the more they know that's a priority and it doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to happen but it's more more likely you know just to and and I think yeah our spouses they, they're not going to understand the twinship unless they are a twin um they, they're just not you know so um I think like for it's it's sort of an education sort of thing like hey this is what it's like to have an identical twin and um you know also to help invite them into that too you know because you know, there are going to be boundaries you'll have to place in, in your, in your life. I wouldn't say with your twin, but like, I guess like for Michelle and I, one of the, the biggest things is like, we still, you know, I, I, I tend to, okay, this is, I guess the boundary that I'm sort of referring to is that, you know, issues in my marriage, I need to deal with in my marriage. You know, if there's things that are going on that, 
um, yeah, I might be like struggling with, I, I can talk to Michelle about them, but I need to be very discerning about, you know, how I'm talking, you know, what, how, how I'm talking about what I'm going through. If that makes sense. It doesn't mean that I sit there and analyze it and I feel like I can't be as open as I usually am with Michelle. I just mean to say that, you know, we always want to be able to work towards unity with our spouse. Um, and, you know, the world just has a completely different view about that. Um, but, you know, it's like, if you're having an issue with your spouse, you want to talk to your spouse about it. It doesn't, but you can also, I think, obviously there are ways that God's going to use sisters in Christ and, and people who are, who know you intimately to help bolster you up in something that you need to do, um, a conversation, a hard conversation you need to have and pray with you too. You know, that's like, that's what's important about sharing in, in the trials that you're going through. Um, but just to say that, you know, that, that is perhaps a boundary there, just sort of being aware of, you know, how much you're going to your twin versus like when you're sort of finding your refuge there in a sense, like, you know, like you, you, you want to be able to go to your spouse, the sort of in the same ways that you go to your twin as that place of like, ah, like release and, you know, some sort of refuge and they're not going to be, it's not going to be exactly the same, but I would, I would like to work towards that. Like I'm, I'm thankful to that. I, um, have made that important in my marriage with my husband that he can, you know, like that we can both be that for each other, you know, so that we, you know, co can, can find rest with one another. Um, and I, I don't know. I just, yeah, because that's usually your twin, right? Like when you're having a bad day, or when things something's not going right, and you just like want to go talk to your twin because they'll understand, they'll get it, and they'll just be there to listen. And um, I think you know they're they're still going to be there for that. That's that's it's and that's that's wonderful. Just you know, don't like I would say that in my relationship with Michelle, I could use Michelle and our, our relationship as like an escape from doing the right thing sometimes because there have been times where I can go to her and say something, and she's not going to say like you know, it, 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 there have been times yes. where she won't, she won't like say, oh, Marilise, that's not right. Or, or she might say, oh, that's really hard or that's very difficult. But it's like, Michelle, because of her personality, she's not going to say like, Marilise, you need to do this. And, um, you know, in the same way that my spouse would, because um, that's like a gifting I feel like he has is just be able to call in for what it is. And that's a very, I'm thankful for that. You know, I need that in my life. Um, but you know, it's just that, that escape in a sense, like that's what I would, I would air, I would encourage twins to consider if and when that's happening, because that can be, um, that can sort of harm the health of the marriage, I would say. Yeah. I feel like we are always trying to cultivate sameness and that can happen at the, um, like that can happen in such a way where like, if I, yeah, if one of us does need to hear something different like no don't do that or think about it a different way or whatever that's not natural for us for us it's natural to like validate one another yes, and to like and agree and agree yeah. and and, mm -hmm. and but i'll i'm aware of it now and i'll tell her like I, you can't talk to me about this because i'm too close to you like you have to take mm -hmm. it to like a third party because you're gonna i'm just gonna i'm too close to you for it yeah like, so, like she sometimes she can't give me advice or something right because yeah. because or so I'm like just in it with you yeah, like, and, yeah. And, and 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 we always want to like and we're very good it, it's actually something that would well, I don't know. I just feel like um, the men in my life can be better at being like, no, and here's a different perspective or like whatever. And like just giving me a different angle on something that like maybe I don't even want to hear. Uh, <laughs> whereas with her, it's like, no, no, you're totally right. We're like, no, you're totally right. Like the way you're seeing it is correct. You know what I mean? It's just like <laughs> we want to be this. We like like yeah, find yeah, comfort. Yeah. We find yeah. comfort in the agreeing and in the sameness and the validation. And yeah. then in uh, a relationship with, uh, a spouse I imagine like that's not gonna be like how it is it's not he's not just gonna be like validating me all the time um so that's interesting um I guess I'll have to think about how creating the place of rest is something that will have to be consciously cultivated um mm -hmm. with a spouse perhaps and work towards where it's like very natural for Amy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I think when it's so natural as twins it's <clears throat> it, it, it's because it takes more work with, with your husband, it's like, it's, <laughs> we're just, we're just, we're human, you know, like it's, 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 it's just so, it can, it be, it's like, because it's challenging and because you're like, I just, I haven't really had to do this before, you know, like you've had an, a, a completely synchronized and harmonious relationship for, you know, two decades, three decades. 
you know, it's, it's so easy to just want it to feel that easy again. Like, shouldn't it just be easy? Like, yeah, shouldn't it just be natural? So like, I just, like, like, wait, cause I've been having all these doubts and questions. I'm like, but wait, shouldn't it be easier <laughs> to like, just cleave to another person and like be, cause it's so, I, I'm like, but I can see how easy it can be. I see how easy it can be. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no. Amy's not a man. She's a totally different person. She's like never gonna be a man. And like it's just not gonna be easy. For for the sheer fact of us being different genders, right? Yeah. Like the fact that we're the same gender like creates a ton of <laughs> harmony, right? We like see the world the same way and and are enlivened by the same things and have a similar perspective and men are just, they're very different. Mm -hmm. very different mm -hmm. us, you know? They're very different. And, and that's the thing. I think it's like marriage is such an opportunity to be able to, to appreciate and, and um, allow space for the difference, but also cultivate a likeness to one another in a sense. It's like, you do want to get to the place where you can uh, feel a sense of ease. Like it, it won't be easy, but you should be able to, to get to a place where you can feel a sense of ease in being able to be truly who you are and just sort of like, and yes, who we are is a becoming. We're always like, you know, we're always being in a sense sanctified and be, being perfected. But the thing is, is that you, you know, it's kind of like, it's just, it's, I think that our challenge as twins is that we have, we have to, we have to persevere a bit more. Like we, it's so easy to give up because you're just like, well, and so then you can find escapes, you know, whether, you know what I mean? Like you can find escapes and, and that's just, honestly, like if, if, if we want to be kind of like upfront about that, that's just, you know, um, finding an easy way out in a sense, you yeah. know, and it's, it's, and it's like, it's understandable why we would do that as humans. And you can understand why it's more challenging for us as twins and why we might fall into escapes, um, and finding that escape in our twin sister, um, and, and, you know, using using other manners of escape because it's just like and I think I think sometimes like you know uh, pe there's also the ways even for people who are singletons where this happens in, in marriages where you know um, maybe the mother finds her escape in the children you know or the husband finds his escape in the work and th there's there's def many different manners of escapes that people can create suddenly and utilize um, and you know you that's where you go like it's almost like you use that as your safe space you know you use that as where you feel safe and comfortable and <laughs> It's like, it's just, it's just so contradictory to our nature to think, well, why should I, why should it have to be hard to get to the place of being in a, in a, in, a comp in making a safe place with somebody? Like it just, it, it, and it's just so, so much more, so much more challenging for us as identical twin sisters, because it's just been there since before we were even born, it's just been there. And it's just such a source of life and, 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 uh, you know, and, and like comfort and thriving. It's not just even stagnant though. Like it's always it's always like this dynamic fun place of safety and, and like curiosity and, and creativity. So it's like, it just, it just, I think it's just having to accept that it's like, no, it, it, there will be a lot of challenge to creating that with a male uh, who's your husband, who is completely unlike you, who has a different family culture. And, but, but if like Marilise has been so so emphasizing when you do that work when you can put when you can put in the effort and be vulnerable and it takes a lot of strength to be vulnerable it takes a lot of strength to be weak you know and be like yes i will lay myself bare and just show you this is really like this is this is like all of me and um i, I to be able to present yourself as all of yourself to the to you know your husband your spouse um, it, it's, it's challenging because there's so much fear about like not being able to be seen, like not being able to be understood and not yeah. being able to be like, just gotten, you know, like, you, yeah. do, do they get you? you do they get it? <laughs> and they may not. Um, but, but you can, you can like believe in, in an ability to, to give that time, you know, to give that a chance, <laughs> you know, to, to be able to say, you might not be able to get me right now, but I trust that you will. <laughs> I, I trust that like we can hold space for our difference as humans and have an appreciation for that difference. Maybe I'm not like that, but I can see that in you. And I, I you know, there's a respect for that difference mm -hmm. and a sense of like, now, once you know that more and more over time, there's an ability to be able to, uh, to, to have that difference somehow be compatible. Like you, you can create some sort of like the sameness is, is the space of holding the difference. And yeah, I think it's probably just like taking the time to get, you know, taking that time to get there and then always being okay with being able to push back into the what's uncomfortable, you know, um, trying to get comfortable with what's uncomfortable. 
<laughs> and um mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of a paradox, isn't it? Oh, absolutely a paradox. I think so many paradoxes with being a twin. It's like we're the same, but we're different. And like yeah. that it sounds like what yeah. you're describing as well. It's like it's gonna yeah. be like uncomfortable to try to get comfortable. And <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It could take years. Maybe you never and maybe you would never even reach that place with your husband that you have with your twin. I'm sure it's just always going to be different, right? But um yeah. maybe you can like pull from the twinship the things you like about being a twin and like try to use that to relate to your husband better. But yeah. I'm not married, so what do I know? <laughs> no, it's good to, it's really good to think about those things that Amy and like, you know, just to, even this whole idea of, you know, pushing back, pushing into the uncomfortable, what's uncomfortable, you know, like I was saying, Michelle, um, Michelle and I, we do have our differences, right? So we're the same, we're very, very similar and we cherish that sameness too. You were, you guys are mentioning that, like you just desire that sameness so much that sometimes it can actually be not problematic, but like when something needs to be called out or something, a hard word needs to be said, you know, it's like, oh, well, I, uh, you know, you want to just, I, I know. And when I sense dissonance between us, I'm like, oh, this is so uncomfortable. And why is this happening? You know, yeah. and that's, yeah. I think for us, that's probably happen most in our par- um, in our parenting, I would say. Um, and also, again, some of the differences for, about our spouses. But um, yeah, anyway, but like, Michelle, you were saying about, um, oh my gosh, I'm just having like a total blank moment. But it, this happens to me occasionally. I'm like, I can't claim it's pregnant brain anymore because I, oh. my daughter is now one. So <laughs> well, I, I like how you guys have mentioned that your spouses are very different, because this is another interesting thing. I've often been like, thinking about like the concept of like a soulmate or something, right? Yeah. And I would have this fear of like, are Amy and I looking for the same guy? Like, because oh. we're so similar. I didn't know that. You know, like what what if we like need the same guy? Like what if I, we're only, what if there's only like one guy out there that like either of us could marry, right? Or something. <laughs> yeah, like, write it out. Or something. <laughs> yeah, just these like terror, this is like these ter- all, I just want to speak to some of the like fears I've had as yeah. a twin about marriage because I don't know if this will like come up for other twins yeah. or whatever, but that was one of them, right? And then, yeah. um, and so I, it was comforting to hear you talk about how your spouses are very different because it shows yeah. how like two very similar people mm-hmm. and back to the letter analogy, which I think was great, two very similar people can be with people who are actually quite different right. and still yeah. have a good marriage. Um, and, like it's and, not like there's just one person who will match yeah. exactly with who, with your set of letters, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and I would, that, that's my, my, my thought came back to me, which was that we are not exactly the same, you know, so we have very, very similar letters. Most of our letters are the same, but you know, we have some letters that are different. Um, you know, one of those things for me, I would say I'm a little more dif- decisive. Um, I can push, I can, I'm more confrontational. You know, I, I don't avoid conflict. I am not conflict avoidant. I don't mind addressing conflict. I'd rather address it so that there can be unity once more and harmony once more. I don't like the tension that's there when I'm, you know, when things are not, when people aren't being real, you know, like, come on, just, this is like, can we just say, talk about what really is going on here? Like I, I, I personally am that way. Michelle is a little more conflict avoidant, a lot, very conflict avoidant. You know, she's not as decisive sometimes, like sort of likes to keep things a little more open. Like, oh, I'm not, well, I'm not sure about this or that, you know, analyzing it. Well, what if I did that? Is that the wrong decision? And so, you know, the, we have been made differently, even as much as similar as we are, God has made us um, different in different ways. It's small, maybe small ways compared to so much overlap. But, you know, that's something I have to believe that God led us to the men that we are with for the, for a reason. And it's a part of marriage is really a refining. It's a, it's a tool God uses to refine you to, you know, sometimes address, c- confront the aspects of yourself that you wouldn't necessarily need to do in your twinship. Um, you know, and it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. It's hard, but it's really worth it. Um, and you do end up growing and maturing spiritually speaking, even emotionally, um, mentally. And, um, and so I, I, just to say that, you know, there are, some differences between Michelle and I. Um, and, you know, it, it's like, I think part of coming, going into marriage or, you know, as you're dating or you're sort of trying to discern, like ask God for his wisdom and discern whether or not this is the person for you, like to be able to acknowledge some of the roles you played in your twinship. So, you know, for in my role with Michelle, for sure, I was more of that like mother hen, you know, protect her. And Michelle wanted me to be good to like she's not that she she cared for my well-being as well but I definitely felt like the protector you know and um 
and and the, the one who sort of like oh let's do this and Michelle like oh I don't know if we should do it. I'm like yeah let's go do it you know and the one who's like driving us towards different opportunity experiences and you know I think just acknowledging that in yourself and sort of understanding like what are the ways that your twin was sort of like bolstering you up in a way or you know like we, we brought talked about this earlier on it's like how you know it's almost like you have this handicap in a sense because like or you're weaker because you've always had this person with you and you were doing life with this person so now you have to do it without this person but now with this other person um but yeah just to say acknowledge like what roles were you playing in your twinship what role was your twin playing in your life you know it's just helpful for you to just sort of sit there and think about it and like be, be intentional about communicating around those things with your spouse, not so that they can become the carbon copy of your twin, because you, that's not what you want. And that's not God's intention in marriage. Um, but just so that there's, again, this awareness, you know, to say, hey, you know, when we grew up, I was really, and I've talked to Jessica, I say, like, I was really protective of Michelle. And it's really hard for me not to be able to protect her and to make sure she's well, and to be there to fill needs that she has. You know, it's, I've had to let go of that you know, and, and thankfully my husband's a good godly man and he, he, and he comforts me through that. You know, he comforts me through that and he, he hears me out and he says, I know that's hard. And cause it is, it's very hard. It's very hard not yeah. to play the role anymore. I mean, and I try to in some respects and I'm still there uh, certainly on an emotional level to, you know, cheer Michelle on and be there for her and encourage her. Um, but you know, I'm just, I'm just not physically there in the same space. Um, so, you know, just it being able to recognize that, again, the roles that you play for each other, the role you play in the twin relationship, it can just be helpful to understand maybe how you might be in your marriage or like what things you, tendencies you might have, maybe either with your spouse or what you might be expecting to receive from them in, in ways, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't know, just something that could be helpful. Yeah. I think one of the things I've thought a lot about and struggled with a bit is that like, you talked about like how women are called to submit in marriage. Um, whereas in my relationship with Amy, I've often felt like a little bit more of the leader, not on everything, but like being the one like, we'll go live here and we'll do this. And like, not 100% more, more of the decisive, time, but yeah. just, yeah, more decide, more like leadery and like, um, I feel like confident kind of leading Amy around and being like, well, we can go do this and then we can do that. And like planning the future with her and then to like step back, um, and be a, wife and to like let my husband lead more or let him not make all the decisions I'm not saying he'd like make decisions without me or whatever but just like mm -hmm. taking on more of that um kind of stepping out of like almost the masculine role that I mm -hmm. kind of take on with like wanting to protect her and kind of lead her and letting a man do that for me feels like unnatural in a way mm -hmm. you know because I'm used to being like in that role and it's very strange it's not a hundred percent that way but like that I've led you around and and stuff but like there's enough of it there that it, it, it's it's like a little bit there's like apprehension that I have about um like allowing a man to do that for me <laughs> like, yeah. that makes sense yeah so, so. Yeah, I, I can yeah I, I definitely feel like Marilise is more of the leader and I I and I and the mother hen though I deeply like would care genuinely about Marilise and her well-being I just would be kind of more like the child in the relationship a bit more, just a bit more. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of like, and, and so now it's very, and I, you know, we're only talking about the hard things so we can understand how to, you know, be able to address these things and try to get better at them. You know, it's not to just like wallow, you know, um, it's hard, but that's good. We should do hard things. Cause like we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so we can do better, you know, um, but like now it's very hard for me to even like make plans. Like it's, 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 you know, because it's just like, I had Mary Lee sort of affirming and, you know, even her expressions of her facial expressions to me would communicate like, yes, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do this together. And like, we can do this. And, you know, and also she's the one who's usually like spearheading it, you know? And so I'm just like, woohoo, like, that's great. Cause I'm kind of in like la la land of like ideas and like, you know, art and like, you know, and Mary Lee's is very artistic too, but it's just like, that's me. And so it's just, it's just really, really been challenging, but, but, but good. See, like you see how these new roles that God kind of puts us into allows us to become more full, like our fullness starts to develop more, right? We have to now learn more of the masculine. If we are more feminine, we have to learn how to do more of those submitting if we've been more of a leader or vice versa. And, um, I mean, there's always going to be the, the element of like, you know, the head of, the husband is the head of the family and at that there is a real sense of submitting, but you don't, he's, 
there's a way in which you also submit to one another. You know, you've given your lives to one another. So, so it's a really a mutual thing. Um, but ultimately, there's kind of a, a sense of a respect, right, that is is necessary to develop and, and practice um, in marriage. And um, yeah, I guess I just I just wanted to really jump back quick to the soulmate thing because I really think, guys, like I think this is some. I really wish this were talked about more because I I see so many people who are you know desiring you know partnership marriage children and it's it's hard because it's getting delayed so much with so many other things that like college and other other things that are basically told to you as like this is what's going to be like what you should be pursuing and you know don't get me wrong we can all like start to want to pursue those things and there's nothing inherently wrong with those things that are being pursued but it's like family just does not get talked about as like a part of your future. You don't see on like the career chart, like mother or father, you know, the, um, it's not present there. Or wife. Or wife. <laughs> yeah, or wife. Yeah. And like, and yet like our whole biology is made to, you know, to like, you, we have real biological realities of like our, our flat, our bodies and our purposes are also held within the way that God has designed us. And so I think it's very, to me, it's quite sad and has very big consequences to not, bring marriage, wife, husband, you know, father, children into the discussion at a younger age. Um, and I, I, I do think too, with this whole idea of the soulmate, um, sometimes we have to start to see marriage more as like, again, you know, if we think about it from a theological perspective, of course, like a sacrament, this is, this is a position you take on almost like like I want to write something about like the monasticism of marriage or something or like the monasticism of even motherhood but there's a role you you take on and you know we have there, there's a real choice there just like you're choosing to be a professional golfer I don't know I'm just just throwing something out there but like we there there I think that when you realize it more and more as a choice and yes like that doesn't mean you just like you know pick some name from a jar and then like go propose but like there there is something about like wow there's really you know I think if we understood it more to be not this just like random thing but more so and and definitely not just a feeling uh but you know it's a choice that then you know obviously feelings can come into that, of course, that, you, you know, you, we, our feelings are a part of our, who we are and how we're made, but they can't be, like, for so, for so much of the narrative in mainstream culture, it's feelings, it's all feelings, yeah. you know, and, and so there's very little room for this discussion of choice, the, 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 the willful decision, and, um, and also we forget that, like, feelings are something also that can be created, you know, over time, you start to create familiarity, you start to create the feeling, like, we're talking about these feelings of safety, or these feelings of, you know, um, being known, fun, mm -hmm. exploration, being known, all of that, so, like, it's, it's weird, we kind of get, like, it's almost like we, sometimes the culture has put feeling uh, first for, versus the choice and it's lost both. Like now we just have mentally depressed and anxious, you know, there's a, there can be like a huge rise in, in, in mental illnesses and, you know, just mental struggle, you know, I mean, I think anyone can relate to that, but like, it's, I think it's hard because it then, you know, again, feelings are really important and they're not to be like dismissed or, or disregarded, but they have to be in a proper place, right? They have to be in a proper place. And so the idea of it being a choice and a, a decision of the will uh, to be married to somebody, if that was more in the discussion, then a lot of people who are feeling the sense of like, I, I'm getting older now, or like, I really would like to, I do value this as a part of, you know, either a role of that God has created or something important for society. It's like, there's just, because there's so less, so, so little discussion about it, I think that makes there's be so many less people who are like yes I'm ready to to take on this role now you know it's so yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know I just want to speak to that really quick yeah I, I wanted to say I wish I, I appreciate you two being like vulnerable and open about like what's hard about being married like in the context of being coming from a twinship um but I don't think people I think it's almost like taboo to talk about like the the duty and the choice and the sacrifice that comes with being married and it's mostly people trying to like paint a super rosy picture and like nothing's hard and like this is just smooth and we just have all these great feelings and like nobody really <laughs> talks about like the work that it takes to cultivate the marriage, um, which I think maybe, I don't know, I think maybe then more marriages might actually like stay together if people were like, sometimes it's hard and you have to get through it and you'll have all the nice like warm fuzzy feelings that you like, that all the fairy tales tell us about, right? And like that you have to like move through it and work on something. Um, so I always just wish people would be a little more like open about that stuff. But I also get it, you know, people want their privacy. That's part of why people don't talk about it, but yeah. And I, I think people also like maybe don't want to sound like 
they're complaining or they just, or they just like stuff it inside of themselves, you know, and they just like, don't, you know, they're just like, I don't even, you know, I think that's why like what Marilise is talking about, about like practicing this like kind of radical vulnerability within one's marriage is again, it's just, it's just hard. And so if people don't feel like they can talk about, first of all, some of the things that, you know, they are working through there, then they also don't talk about it with like anyone because they're just like, well, it's supposed to be fine. Something must be wrong with me or maybe something, yeah. or, or you just shift the blame of like, something's just wrong with him or her, you know, like you point to yeah. the other person and it's like a total scapegoating situation. And it's like, wait a second, guys, like we're in, we're like, this is, we're in a fallen, like an ontological condition that's fallen. We yeah. are going to have to work through these things. And this, this is just, this is the reality of it. So, but what's so beautiful is that there's so much like there, while there's just so much potential of kind of like, being able to make that like rise above, like there's a there's a grappling and a grasping for the higher for the for for what that kind of allows you to be able to see when you are able to get through certain things. And yes, there's valleys and hilltops. There's it's it's a constant progression, like I said. But you are making there is some sort of you know uh, spiritual progression. I think, mm -hmm. but it's hard to talk about this stuff. But there's no spiritual discussion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, like you have to have a spiritual like toolbox. Like you have like I don't know. While we're talking, I'm thinking of the words like patience, acceptance, duty. Mm -hmm. Like these like Stop spiritual. Saying. Those are like spiritual concepts, right? That will like help you through all of this. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't have that framework, it's I imagine it's a lot more difficult. So yeah, even gratitude. But, like it's easy. Yeah. It's easy to see all the great things that we have and um our life together and why that's good and then um but with a spouse it's like someone that's so different like the challenge is like not to focus on what you don't have or, or what isn't there or whatever and just practice gratitude for what you do have um but yeah like gratitude for, like appreciating all the differences I think that's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. a good debate it's like kind of the opposite of what you're used to as a twin which is appreciating the sameness it's like mm. you you have to appreciate like differences as well mm -hmm. so oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, very much so yeah. very much so. i feel like we could talk so much more about this topic there there's actually um i'm gonna send you guys after this this like these two cycles again back to this gentleman rick reynolds he is a counselor marriage counselor um sort of focusing in this very specific uh, area of conflict for married couples but um this, he talks about like the cycle of grace and the cycle of failure. So cycle of failure is what most, a lot of people are caught in, in marriage. And, and it can apply to other relationships as well. Um, but you eventually get like this pretend normal um, mm -hmm. because like when life squeezes in on you, especially with marriage, like you don't, ex you don't necessarily expect that. Or again, like mainstream culture doesn't like tell you that. I guess there, there was this really good movie I watched recently. Um, it was about a football star. And my husband loves football. But anyway, long story short, it like really showed the realities of like really hard life living together and sort of pushing through some very big challenges. But mainstream culture and most movies and rom-coms is like nothing about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like when life squeezes in on you, you know, you have you're this, it's, it's almost like this you have a choice. You have a choice. You have, there's this crossroads. When life squeezes in on you, you know, you can realize that part of, a big part of your decision to marry is to die to self. And we talked a little bit about that in our last podcast, but basically choosing to love somebody. And that's your, one of your biggest roles as a wife is to learn to love somebody. And, you know, a lot of times, again, mainstream culture is going to say, it, get married because you're going to get big love through that relationship. And you will, you certainly will. But it's just that you're, you, when life squeezes you, you have this crossroads, what are you going to do? And life squeezes you maybe through some differences in the marriage or even external things too. You know, there's a, an unexpected death in the family, you know, your job's crazy and very stressful. And, you know, you have this friendship that's just like this friend who's super needy and you don't know how to handle it. Like there's all these things in life that can squeeze you. And in and, and that squeezing, we have a choice of, of how we respond. Um, and, you know, a lot of us will, in, in my life, certainly in this sin cycle that I was caught into, caught up in, it's like, I just sort of would escape, you know, um, because I wasn't really modeled again, that, that emotional security or safety in the marriage to confess some of what I was struggling with. And um, anyway, but yeah, we end up going like when you're in that cycle of failure, you just get to this pretend normal because you you do want things to be okay. You, you want things to be all right. And, you know, your culture, again, because we don't often talk about the hard things, it's like, well, it should be all right, right? Like I need it to be all right, that no one else is dealing with this. So 
mm-hmm. figuring out some way to pretend normal, you know? And so you pretend normal, mm-hmm. um, but it's, it's like, there's actually no true heal. There's no heal. There's no grieving and healing that goes on in that cycle of failure. Um, instead, there's a lot of shame and guilt because again, with that escape can come sin and introduction of sin into the marriage or into this w- relationship. Um, but then the cycle of grace is just, you know, the opposite. And it has some of those, like you were talking about Amy, like I'm looking at thinking about these words and in this little graphic, which I love graphics and very visual person. It like lists some of these things that what is that dying to self look like, or, you know, letting the old self die and then you like being a new creation and the renewal of your mind. And what does that look like in the context of marriage? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I would just say that even though marriage isn't ultimately, I don't believe the purpose is biblically speaking, like you go into marriage so I can get all these things, like get all my needs met and like be like, you know, uh, what like flaunted with like everything. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> the words that are coming. <laughs> yeah. Like you're flaunted with this adoration and, you know, um, it, it's, it's that like you still actually, that's the beautiful thing is like God still blesses you with, with the feeling of being in love with your spouse when you're working through these hard things. Like that's something that I'm really thankful for is that, you know, you know, in choosing not to do that whole failure cycle to get out of the failure cycle and to choose the cycle of grace and to, you know, not just be okay with the pretend normal, like it, it's so rewarding and you actually do end up feeling extremely loved, extremely known. And, um, it's, it's, I, I, it's quite remarkable. I can't really, I'm, you know, lack of like, it's, it's quite remarkable, especially in my case and what I was dealing with in my life. So I, I would just encourage that marriage is, is truly a gift. And we've talked a lot during this podcast about like how challenging and hard things are, but God will give you, he will equip you. You know, if you are willing to take that step of obedience in your life, um, when things are hard to say, God, I, I trust that, that you have put this part, this person in my life as my partner. And I, and I'm going to see that person as someone who, um, who you're going to use to, to, to meet me where I'm at and to help me and comfort me in this situation, but also to grow me out of some perhaps sin that I'm dealing with that I need to be purged of. Um, and I don't know, I just would say it's, it's, it's very rewarding. And I, I, I would encourage any married couple, whether you're a twin or not a twin, but like just not to settle for the pretend normal that often can happen in marriages, which is where that like, you know, you've met many married couples, it's sort of stagnant, you know, the marriage is just sort of stagnant and you're just like, oh, that stinks. It's like, you can tell they care for one another, you know, they love each other, but like, you don't really like sense it in like this deep way. And like, I don't know, I would just say, oh no, like there's so much more. There's, it's, it can be so much better. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just want to scream that at the top of the mountaintops because I feel like so many marriages land up in very stagnant place. And it's hard to see that. It's really sad to see that, um, given what, what the gift that marriage ought to be and should be and God's intended purpose for marriage is, you know, to, cause like, if you, if you think, okay, mar- sorry, marriage is not the purpose of marriage is to love somebody, to learn, to love somebody. Well, guess what? Your spouse is also, um, charged with that too to love you, right? So it's, it's, it's actually lands up being a very good thing, you know, um, as it's also challenging, but also a very good thing because ultimately you're both loved and respected and you, you get to share that unity by the spirit. Um, and, and you get to enjoy some of those things you enjoy in twinship too, you know, synchronous, synchronicity and harmony and, um, you know, catching that inside joke, you know, getting that inside joke or making that observation or putting on that song and just jamming out and just, you know, all the beautiful things that, you know, we love so much about our twin relationship. It is absolutely possible in marriage. It doesn't come as easily for sure not, but it's, I want to just speak a positive note there to say that it, it does happen. Um, it does. <laughs> it can. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I appreciate <laughs> thing. I like how, you know, cause, um, I don't know, Julie and I have, have expressed, like, our concerns about marriage and everything, and you two are very inspiring. It's so good to see, like, identical twins who are, like, making it work and, like, did it, and it's, I'm just like, okay, I want to be like them, so. Okay. <laughs> good role model. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Oh, oh yeah. goodness gracious. 
<laughs> That's so kind of you. It's good. It's about, yeah, I don't have a lot of examples of yeah. um, uh, like identical twins that I know that are close and they're married. So it's yeah. just like, and I'm good to see. I would look in the culture for it. I'd be like Googling like twins that got married. Uh, T and Tamara Maori. Okay, they got married. Okay, well, the Olsen twins, one of them got married. They're fraternal, T and Tamara. But yeah. Well, yeah. so are the Olsen twins. And the Olsen's, but, yeah. But they, you know, they, one of them, Mary Kate got married and then she got divorced. And, uh, and I'm like, ah, where are these examples? And then like some twins, there were these famous twins in, in San Francisco, the Brown twins, and they were like a whole spectacle because they would dress up really crazy and like cheetah and like big hats, and they were like a local local celebrities. And you know, oh well, they never got married. They were joined at the hip. They yeah. were like very joined at the hip. And yeah. It's like so there are examples of twins who like never get married, and then but like to us, like that's kind of sad because I think that's where our Christianity comes in. It's like, but we're Christians, and like we want to, and we see the like holiness and the goodness of of doing that. And it's a desire for us, but man, I don't know, maybe other yeah. ones are more secular and don't care. But. I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. This is why I want to write a book about this. I want to interview both uh, twins who have taken both paths. Like, cause like I, I've, I've thought about like, okay, if I wake up at age like 45 and I've never married or had children, like I would be sad. Right. Um, but I'm sure these, uh, but so did these other twins have that experience? Did they mourn not having husbands and children like, or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And I'm just like very curious about the different ways that your life can go having been born a twin right and um and also the challenges of making a choice to kind of split onto a different path or whatever yeah. like a, or, a, or whatever and and why some twins don't choose that or um, or if it's even conscious if it's i don't know. I, I, know. I think that's probably a big thing it's i think like for they some don't really it's not, think about it yeah i think for some it's just they're doing what's easy and feels natural and it's not conscious and we've been trying to sort of like consciously like think about the next you know 30 years well, of our well, lives and be brave and like you know understand like understand that it's like going to be uncomfortable but it's worth it and it's like you know that's the nature of sacrifice right it's like make a sacrifice and I guess I don't know if you're, yeah there are different rewards it's just different but. yeah it's so different guys and I think like I I, I just love you know we're, we're so so thankful to have met you and connect connected with you Amy and Julie and it's truly just as much as it you know, it's humbling to think, to, to hear that it's a gift for you. It's a gift for us as well. And, you know, I think, I think that it's just, it, it's the reason why there's just such a, it's, it's almost like culture shock, but with like values. I don't know. Cause it's like, you've got, you've got this whole idea of what love is for your whole life, you know? And, and then suddenly you've just have this like completely different understanding of what love it truly is and and like Marilee said I mean we, we were born and raised in the church and yet even for us you know it's it's hard not to let the things of the world and the culture not to you know I think God made the world I think that there can be some crazy ways in which we separate these things but you know God is actually you know he made the world so all of these things ultimately are being redeemed and are his ultimately but it's just that it's it again I think it's like culture shock with values right like suddenly now you're you love is has to take on a completely different understanding and experience and yeah I think you just have to kind of like to be acknowledged that 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 is is going to be a you know a day in day out um effort but also there is there like Marilise is talking about there there are so many amazing fruits you know there's so many amazing fruits that that it will bear mm -hmm. and you know that's that, that's something that I think, you know, it's, I, I think, I think too, like sometimes we misidentify the hard, you know, it's like, well, it's just, it's okay if it's not like thriving or it's just kind of like, like Mary Lisa was saying stagnant. Cause that's just my, that, that's where the heart is. And I'll just like, that'll be my heart that I'm doing, you know, for God's sake, you know, but it's almost like, no, the, the real heart is actually being able to be in that place of vulnerability, right? Like the real heart is to actually allow yourself to go through many deaths and rebirths in a sense, right? Many deaths of your, your, you know, self to be able to kind of like continue to progress forward. So it's almost more like, I don't know what one, one is kind of just a slow steady bleed out I suppose and the other is kind of like sorry sorry this that sounds so morbid but like it's kind of like or it's like this kind of like you know basically like a big shock death and then but then you're kind of revived into like life again and so it's like it, it's I don't know I think that yeah. there's just something there about like that it, it's that that shock but then also just the it's like you're almost also like reshot it's almost like oh wow like I actually wasn't living like it it's like, oh, wow, now, like, I'm really alive. It's, I don't know how to describe it. It's not that you weren't alive before. That was truly you were at your, where you were at. That was living, right? That was, like, life. But now you're kind of, like, being ushered into uh, greater capacities of life. But that will also come through the, with the birthing pains and the labor. Mm -hmm. But then there's also new life with that. And yeah, you can just... 
yeah, like to have this appreciation for then and for what's now and to realize like those are all a part of that journey um, of, of, yeah, of this like, you know, this kind of progression forward. I, I just want to say as a last comment, because I know we're, we're um, our, our time is running out here or running up or whatever. Michelle, though, I would say it's not completely different, though. Like, I, 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 don't, I tend to not be a person who likes to speak in, um, how, what would you call it? Yes, like absolutes, because, okay, why do we have rom-coms and why do we have, like, romance? Like, it's not that that isn't observed, right? Like, okay, do you, do you you're, saying, you're saying that the concept of love is not completely different? Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, like, okay, so just to say that, yeah, the concept of love is very different in mainstream media and in movies and, like, again, rom-coms, I'll just point, you know, say that, but it's not as if you don't experience some of that in what you're, you know, like, so true, true, true love, right? It, it comes with both the sacrifice, you know, the submitting, the the uncomfortable, you know, the, the, the fear sometimes, a lot of those things that you don't see any of, you know, in mainstream culture. Um, but, but like, there's still beautiful, sweet moments that have been captured. You know, that's what the movie, what movies wants to do. It's like, they want to capture the most beautiful parts of what a relationship is, right? It, it, so just to say that, like, there is, there are those built in, um, you know, I don't know, like it starts to rain and you go dance in the rain, you know, like you still have those moments. It's just, it's just that again, like true and, and mm -hmm. love as a choice, you know, where it's not just feelings based feelings come in, but it's, it's rather like Michelle was saying, just a like choice then feelings come versus like just feelings and no choice. It's like, I, I, I believe that it's not so complete. It's, it, it might be, you know, our, our understanding of love, biblically speaking, you know, as modeled through Jesus' life, um, it, it's it's radical and it's it's beautiful and it's ultimately very sacrificial. It's, it's the most sacrificial love we could ever ask or receive from anybody. Jesus dying on the on the cross, not just a physical death, but a separation from God, um, and then God honors that that obedience to reunite and to reconcile Christ unto Himself, right and I guess I just want to say that I don't, I don't tend to like to speak in absolutes because I don't feel that, you know, my marriage has been completely not what I expected it to be. Do you see what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there are still a lot of um, experiences, moments that I would say, oh, you know, like I'm really, I'm really thankful for this man. And I'm so thankful for this home. And I'm so thankful that we share, like, for example, a value that we have is like our door is an open door. We love people to come in and out, just come, come by, you know, you don't need to you have a formal invitation to come, just come, you know, and that, that's something I'm so thankful for. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I could picture this in a movie or something like that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> say that I don't, you know, I don't like to scare people in the sense of that absolute, that it's like absolutely completely opposite to, to or, or completely different from what we, what we've seen love to be in, in depicted in real life relationships or in, in movies or in books or in or what have you, because ultimately love, God is love. And so that, that love, like, I don't want to say like a twisted, distorted love is of God. No, I just mean to say that you know, the, the feeling of being in love with somebody is, is still part of God's plan. Like, you know, like <laughs> you'll have those things, right. Um, you know, and so I don't know, I just want to say that because I, I'm, I, and I, in our podcast, we, I, sometimes we, we like to not, not play devil's advocate, but just like, just yeah. call yeah, because, yeah. yeah, I would, I would say not completely different. Just, yes, it is a very love and marriage biblically is, um, it's, it's, it's not always what you expect, you know, or, or what, what you, it's hard. It's hard sometimes and challenging. And you only know that when you're in it, right. You can't really know until you're in it. So I, I used to, there was, I have a friend on Twitter that um, he's married with um, and Christian as a family. And we would kind of talk about this, like the place of feelings. Cause a lot of people like on Twitter that are like, feelings are like completely mood. Like you just pick someone to marry and like make it work. And I'm like, eh, that's a little like, <laughs> too hard for me like <laughs> yeah. po like positive feelings towards a person and and he would say like do people really think that god doesn't like have feelings for us like i'm sure he does mm -hmm. like it's all it's duty and loving like fatherhood as, as well as like i don't know you know god is impossible for us to fully fathom but like you know i think it's a little it's a mix of both right like you'll have those idyllic moments you're talking about where it's like this is like mm -hmm. a movie and then 
also the stuff that isn't in the movies, which is like the harder moments and, and things yeah. like that. So. Maybe what, what I more so mean is that there's the both. There's both. There's both. And I think that's what feels so different though, because now whole having both is having a difference of what love actually looks like in reality is what feels so different than maybe what you know you get from movies, which is like the highlight reel or, or Instagram or anything, anywhere, social media. Yeah, you get the highlight like reel. Constant bliss. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, and so yeah. in that way, I think it is very different. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think in that way it is very different. But the the butterflies, the lovey dovey, the cute, the 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 the, 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 in, the endearing things of love are obviously also of God's nature, right? And he I, you know, I think about how God made flowers for us. Like he just made flowers. I mean, that's just mind boggling. Like these are God's love notes to us all over the earth. And it's just like, God is, is very in touch with those tender and, um, you know, almost like the, the sentimental rom romantic things of love, yeah. you know? So I, I, I think that's a good, I mean, I think that's a good counter Marilise for certain. Um, it's not to throw all of that out, you know, it's yeah, just, yeah. I think it's just about an ordering, right? Like C.S. Lewis said, we'll talk about put first things first and second things, um, you know, after, because otherwise you lose both. So it's kind of like to be able to put the choice first and then be able to trust that the, you know, uh, you know, the romance will work in conjunction with that choice, which the choice is just much more a decision. It's not really caught up with feelings, but, you know, obviously there are feelings that we have as humans that will also influence um, our decisions. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's not the choice is going to be the constant and the feelings will be what come and go or what can go through different seasons or, you know, will be, can be, a, um, you know, basically like, uh, you know, they can be kind of aroused in certain ways, but it's like that, that, it, that's, I think that's what just feels so different though. Cause again, what you're getting constantly 24 seven from so much media is, you know, just, just the fact that there's just the, the good, right. And, and there is a lot of good, but, but there's also the hard. So the place yeah. of the good and hard is what feels so different, but there's yeah. still the goodness in it. And there's still, there's going to be the, the challenge, but also, uh, the, the, the reward, the yeah. reward, yeah, the reward too. So definitely. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you so much. This has been so great. I feel like we could just talk for hours and hours because we're both twins. And then like so Michelle and I could talk for hours and hours. I'm sure you I, you both there's a lot I have a lot more questions for you guys and, and I'm very curious about yeah. about your lives and every yeah, this has been very um it's it's so nice to feel understood in, yeah. in the way in the frame of, of being a twin. It's it's and Christian. It's really, really nice. So Oh, that's good. Yeah, we should thanks. definitely do this again. If you, you ladies would be up for it, we'd, be, we'd be definitely be up for it. And we thank you so much for your time. For your Seriously. time. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thanks yes. so much. Yay. Bye. See you guys later. Bye. See you later. Bye, Bye. Julie and Amy. Bye, Lucy. Bye, Bye Amy. Bye, Shelly. <laughs>